like to talk about one of the most crucial parts of a construction document set. I'm telling you, if you get this one right and you do it well, every framer is going to love you. My name is William O. Hicks, licensed architect in Litchfield, Minnesota. And today, good architecture means proper dimensioning of a floor plan. Today I'd like to talk about proper dimensioning of a floor plan. Proper dimensioning of a floor plan starts with accurate drawings. And what I mean by accurate drawings is a framing plan is something for the framer to work from and lay out all the structural members of a home as well as window and door openings and any other item that may be involved in creating the skeleton of the house. In order to do that, we have to start with good drawings. And good drawings mean that stud size matters. Common stud size is used in most residential and light commercial construction, if they're made from wood, are two by fours and two by sixes. And the actual dimension of those, or what's known as the nominal dimension, is an inch and a half by three and a half inches or an inch and a half by five and a half inches. Now metal studs vary in many sizes from three and a half, three and five eighths, four inches, five and a half, and six inches. But I'm not going to concentrate on those today. We're going to talk about wood studs. And we need to be very accurate in the drawing of our floor plans so that we can dimension them properly and they mean something to the guy in the field and that we don't have mistakes or inaccuracies once that building is complete. This is more especially important when we're talking about clear distances for code issues or placing items such as cabinets within that space. Now, Oftentimes I see drawings that people have put together that show a 2x4 wall that's 4 inches wide and a 2x6 wall that's five, 6 inches wide and that's not accurate. I don't know what that is indicating but we can do better as architects and drafters and be as accurate as one, one 256 of an inch. And with that in mind, there should be no discrepancies on what you're drawing versus what's actually going to happen in the field. So as I said, start with good drawings, stud size matters, quarter and eighth inch plan should not show finishes. If you want to show finishes, do a half inch plan, maybe accompanied by an interior elevation, which allows you to then show those cabinets and other various things in there and how they fit within those finishes. Now when you're doing your quarter inch plans for a framer to work from, remember, try to think like a framer. If you don't know what I mean by that, watch how a framer puts lines on a subfloor to place their walls. Typically they will place a individual snap line and put an X or some other marking to describe which side of that line that plate or stud wall goes on. Watch, watch videos on guys laying out <coughs> walls or go watch guys lay out walls in the field. Ask questions and understand the process because that's going to make you a better drafter and it makes it more comprehensive when you put together your plans and your framers are going to love you for it. Um, so going back to inaccurate stud sizes, wherever you draw a wall that's two inches or 
four inches or six inches wide, whether it be a furring wall, a two by four or two by six wall, you're not accurately showing what that is. And to compound that, if you center line dimension that, you're causing your framer in the field to do math before he goes out and starts snapping those lines on the floor. Now every good framer will research and study a set of plans, but half of three and a half inches is one and three quarters of an inch. And I don't want my guys in the field having to add an inch and three quarters to every dimension I give them or subtracting it and causing potential errors in the field. So I always like to dimension to one side of the wall or the other, and that gets even more compounded when you have walls that may have 5 8 jip instead of half inch, or some other finish such as paneling or some kind of wainscot. None of those things should matter when the framer is just putting plates and studs out on that subfloor. So, you also may have double walls for sound, and even those are easy to snap to one side of each of those plates to ensure that you get one inch separation in this example, or whatever your intended separation is. Now, wall drawings like this that show a composition of the wall are very important. But oftentimes they will have that one sheet in front of them and you want to make it as easy for them to put those dimensions on the subfloor and start putting those walls up. Remember, mistakes happen when framers have to do math. We don't want guys to have to do math. That's our job. We can do it on the computer very quickly and easily. So I want to start out talking about how to do the exterior dimensions of a wall and make it simple and fast and do it quickly. Um, most CAD programs have a continuing dimensioning ability and they create what I call strings of dimensions. So when we're doing exterior walls, I like to start with all the items that touch the exterior wall. Now that includes windows, doors, if we had columns in here that are in an exterior wall that I have to know where they are, I would show those as well. But as you can see with this lower line of dimensions, I started at this exterior wall corner and then went to the center line of that window. I center line windows because if the homeowner or the contractor or the budget dictates that we switch that window out for something else, I like to have it center line so that rough opening changes, that location isn't determined based on the rough opening, which may be inaccurate if they decide to go with a different brand or model of window. So I would go to the center line of that window, corner, center line of that window, center line of that door. Now getting to that first interior wall, I like to always dimension to the plan east and plan north of all walls, all walls, every time that way it's consistent throughout your drawings and the guys in the field always know that to the plan west and plan south of those marks on the floor is where that plate goes and it causes less errors in the field and that's what we're trying to do we don't want errors we don't want to have someone to have to pay to redo this work ever so plan east Center line, plan east, plan east, center line, plan east, corner of the building. Now that gives us a good idea of where all those items are across the wall. The next line that I would do would be walls that intersect that exterior wall. So we have an exterior corner wall and the next exterior corner. And we put that in and then continuing our dimension string would be the plan east of the first wall I hit. Then the next wall, next wall, next wall, and the final, the corner of the building. Now that gives us a good idea where all the walls are, and that makes it simple for the framers to come in and say, I hook my tape on this corner of the subfloor, and I can pull it over 23 feet, 10 and a half inches, and that's where my line gets snapped. That's simple for the guys in the field. They don't have to do math, and it's just done. So then the next string of lines or dimensions I would do would be 
exterior corners of the building. If this was a multifaceted exterior, I might have five or six of those dimensions across this wall. This one's a basic house. So we have this corner to this corner. I draw that one and I'm not worried that I'm repeating that because we're going to clean that up in a minute. And then I go all the way to the far corner and now I've got that exterior wall with all the <clears throat> items in that wall and all the places where walls intersect that wall dimensioned across that building. The next thing that I would do is the similar thing with columns. Now your columns may be rough sawn which is closer to the actual dimensions that you call out or they may be nominally sized so for instance a four by four rough sawn column is probably three and seven eighths to four inches by three and seven eighths to four inches i draw those all as four by fours actual size now if it was a nominal not a rough sawn number it would be three and a half by three and a half, similar to what a two by four is and two by six nominal dimensioning. So again, I would start with the outermost corner of the first column, go to the center line, and then bring that back to the nearest face of the building. So as you can see here, I got three inches, five and a half, five foot nine to the corner, and then I just repeat to outside wall corners because after they've done all of the work on the interior of the house and they go to lay out those columns, they're going to take those dimensions from the corners of the house. They're going to um, find out through math in the field that they have to do by pulling right angles and, and angle dimensions and squaring things up, but they will find these in relationship to the outside corners of the building, not the inside elements or anything that are on the middle of that exterior wall. So my dimensions for columns would be column center line, corner building, corner building, outside of this group of columns because that's an overall width I want to know and then go to center line center line center line center line outside edge and then relate it back to the corner of the building I repeat this for everything I need to acquire across there and then in the very end I'll start to clean all those dimensions up and delete them and I'll show you that in a moment once we've done all that, you'd start working on your interior walls. But remember, your interior walls often touch an exterior wall. So I wouldn't necessarily need to know where this wall is because I have that dimension or any of these walls across here. However, we're missing where this wall is in relation to those two. We're missing where this wall is in relation to those two. We're missing where these walls that go plan east and west in relationship to the exterior walls. So those are the few things that I will dimension on the interior of the plan. So things to keep in mind, interior wall dimensions, determine interior walls that do not touch the exterior of the building, run strings from one side to the other because that's a control and they can add those up and make sure they're all good. And then Review all the strings and delete all repeated strings. I'm going to show you what a completed plan would look like. This is that same floor plan with all the dimensions cleaned up on it. And as you can see across the top here, I've deleted all of the repeated lines that are closest to the building. And that leaves me with strings that mean something. This entire string is windows and other things in relationship to the walls that touch the exterior of the building. The next one will be all of the walls that touch the exterior of the building and then the overall length of the building. So once you clean all that up, you end up with a very clean floor plan that doesn't have a lot of repeated dimensions. It has just what the contractor or lead carpenter needs in the field without any superfluous dimensions. 
Now I've already put the interior dimensions on here as we discussed and you can see that the only ones that I'm putting on this plan are the ones that reference to known wall placements to keep it clean because oftentimes you're going to fill up the rest of this with notes maybe other indications maybe number note call outs and you don't want your dimensions muddying up all that you want it simple for the contractor to find where those dimensions are and not have more than one location for each of those dimensions now to wrap up some of the additional things that you may need to dimension especially on the interior of a floor plan is any door that is not typical from a corner most designers and architects will want a specific dimension from the hinge corner of that door to the corner of the wall intersection we like to use six inches because it allows for a half inch of sheetrock some some casing and gives you a nice couple of inches or an inch in between that casing and the corner of the wall and it doesn't look crowded whatever you use you may want to have a detail that shows your method and how you like it done but remember if you have doors that aren't in that specific location you may want to mention where they are such as this closet door could use a dimension because it's center lined on the, on the closet and it's not typical from a corner these two bedroom doors are centered in that space and not typical from the corner but those are things you have to look at on a job by job basis and the way that you like to present your work the other thing that you may want to dimension are any cabinets and built-ins that you are not going to do in, in large floor plan or interior elevation of and any other interior features that may need to have some dimensioning the other thing that I'll talk about in a future video is foundations versus slab plans because plumbing goes in at a different time than the concrete is poured and but we're going to talk about that in another video so remember if you do proper dimensioning of a floor plan the guys in the field don't have to do math there's fewer mistakes and you, your framers are going to love you and that's good architecture.